some yeah. something. <laughs> so welcome back everyone. Um so just a note before we start, the, the projects that we are supposed to complete until Friday, they are published on the Discord channel and on the ALF website. Uh, so if you have questions in the next tutorial session, we can ask questions about that. Event website. Event website, Event yes. Workshop. Workshop website, yes. Um, so now we are going to go on with another session of ALF basics. And this time is Jonas Schwab talking about models and how to build your own model. Yeah, um, thank you, Joao, for this introduction. And yeah, exactly, I will uh, talk about how to build um, um, a model. Um, more specifically, I will um, build a model um, live. And so what I, what I will do is like, there's this uh, um, this paper here. So it either PRL or on archive, if you don't have access to PRL, um, where we um, made like had here a direct system and had a, a quantum phase transition where the um, the the, the um, rotation symmetry of the lattice was broken, and then the direct points moved. And this uh, nematic um, quantum uh, quantum critical point, um, yeah, we can simulate with a model. And I'm gonna show you now how to um, build this model. And yeah, it has some some interesting um, properties. Um, if you're interested about this, you can read in this in this paper, which is yeah. This is just the motivation that you see that I I'm gonna going to build a model which is potentially interesting, and yeah. So uh, let's start about uh, what the model is. So it has um, three components. The first is just um, non the 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 h h h zero. So it's just a, a hopping. Um, so it is. Um, the uh, um, yeah, fermions on a pi flux square lattice. So if um, fermions had uh, around one plaquette, they will gather a, a pi flux. And this is then a, uh, this, uh, these are direct fermions. And uh, the second part are, is the transverse uh, field easing model, which has a quantum phase transition. And the third part is a Yukawa type interaction. Um, so which means an interaction like this. So the S set is the, the easing. Um, spin and it like modi uh, um, modulates the uh, the hopping like this and with the sign structure so each of these spins if it's up um, it these and this uh, hopping gets weaker and if it's uh, and and this and this gets gets stronger and if it's down uh, vice versa and this then if if um, I have a um, uh, the the um, ferromagnetic transition of the transverse field easing model um, in, induces also our um, nematic transition in the in the fermion fermions, and uh, we can now uh, have then this um, nematic transition you can see here. And yeah, so uh, this also um, um, shows another uh, feature like the type one, so the uh, HU Kava is basically a type one interaction in terms of um, of ALF, um, and uh, yeah, um, I'm going to show you how to implement this. So yeah, this is the yeah okay this this one you have seen um, kind of before, um, which is the the type or the the Hamiltonians uh, all of ALF can can simulate. And what we're interested in is this HY and this HT. So this HT is our Pyflex lattice, and this HY are um, our Yukawa um, uh, couplings. And now enough about uh, physics, and now we can we can start with the programming. Um, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, yeah, we want to write uh, this uh, Hamiltonian called pneumatic underscore Dirac underscore demo, and there basically we need two things. We need to write this um, Hamiltonian um, pneumatic Dirac demo S mod, so this uh, submodule, 
and um, then we have to add the name to the list of Hamiltonians. These are the two things. Of course, the second thing is, is very quickly done. And the first thing uh, for this, we have to go through the step, define the parameters, create the lattice, set up the hopping, set up the interaction, and define the observables. And this I will now do. Well, therefore, I'm going to sit, sit down and um, do it like this. Yeah. So if you can't uh, see things, I'm trying. I will try to to accommodate you. So if you if you can't see the things I'm doing, if it's too small or so, then you have to say something. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Is it possible to write the Hamiltonian in C plus plus and somehow connect it and compile together with the existing program code? Um, I mean, in principle, it is, but it's, mm, but yes, but no. I mean, everything is possible, but not. It's not implemented. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, okay. Um. So the first thing, um, so I'm here um, in my uh, terminal and in the Hamiltonians, perhaps I'll first clean up a bit that here. And so um, what I'm gonna use here is this, this template, um, which is the, this Hamiltonian, um, yeah, this 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 template file, and I'm gonna copy it to pneumatic Dirac demo underscore s mod s mod dot f ninety, and yeah, so we're gonna look at this file here and so yeah this is the file um, we are going to modify so this is the template file of the Hamiltonian here's like a lot of uh, description at the beginning of how uh, things um, work and um, so the first thing after we, we copied this template file is to set uh, insert our the names we have here everywhere so um, we have here the name, uh, hash hash name, hash hash, and we're going to use the search and replace and uh, replace all occurrences of this with our name, which is the pneumatic Dirac um, demo. Also, if I'm going to do a typo, one of you might catch me and then it's better to say uh, earlier than later because then uh, it will be more <laughs> efficient. So uh, um, yeah, all this, I'm going to replace all these names, uh, placeholder names with the name I'm, I, I chose. And so that's the step one. Step two is, um, so here, are um, these uh, in the um, type um, which we which we define? This is the type which will get allocated to choose which um, Hamiltonian uh, we simulate. Um, we have here the the interface to the core, basically the the function the functions or the like the subroutines or the functions um, which um, Alf um, calls from the Hamiltonian to interface with it. And since we use um, the type one um, uh, um, uh, type one interaction, we also have to add the as not um, uh, procedure, which is a, a, a function that um, I will talk about later in detail. But it's basically for the for the easing dynamics of the um, type one uh, fields, which we'll need um in addition to the things which basically all uh, all Hamiltonians need so the first one um the ham set um sets all the the hopping and interaction matrix 
alloc ops um, allocates uh, the storage for the for the observables, and uh, obser um, um, measures the equal time observables, and obser t method measures the time displaced observables. So um, I'm going to close this terminal here, and I'm going to move my cheat sheet I have over here. And so this was the first step, copy the template, and then um, also replace the occurrences and set define all the interfaces we need. So we, uh, in addition to the default interfaces, I, oh uh, yeah, make um, we needed the S S zero. And now the first step uh, after that will be to um, define the the parameters for which. Um, there's like a, a, a framework to, to add the parameters, um, which is like at compilation time, there's a Python script that looks for these um, param parameters start and parameters end. And between these two, you can add the parameters and then um, um, the, this, this Python script create for you some other um, files for reading the parameters and making MPI company, uh, um, uh, uh, communication and things like that, and um, with with this uh, formalism, the um, uh, PyAlf will also um, be able to know which um, parameters I uh, uh, yeah which parameters the semitone needs uh, and has. So yeah, so the different parameters are the um, SUN symmetry. Um, here it's commented out because this actually, um, so it's not uh, because this is already defined in the hem base, but we want to still add it to the to this uh, ward nematic Dirac. So um, so to this name list, uh, nematic, this name, um, nematic Dirac name list. So it's commented out um, because it's already um, defined in the in the base thingy and after like what's what's added here as a comment is also um, automatically by the scripts added as a description and then we have here the um, imaginary time um, steps step size um, the beta um, l1 l2 um, the um, fermion, fermion decoupling the um, age of um, so this is the the transverse field strength and um, J is the um, the easing uh, strength, and um, C is the, the the coupling strength between um, so the strength of the of the Yukawa coupling, basically the prefactor of the Yukawa coupling. And then we also have a chemical potential if we want to dope our system and get away from half filling. Um, so this is these are the parameters. We can already uh, check with this uh, uh, script here uh, whether the parameters have been um, implemented correctly. And um, there I'm going to go here um, and execute here this um, pass hem pass hem with minus minus test file and then this Hamilton pneumatic Dirac demo as mod and there we can see um, it passed this here with the um, comment and the value and for example here the d tau is not is defined here and not in the ham base um, contrary to for to the nsun which says here it's defined in hem-based because it's commented out here. And yeah, so uh, PyAlf uh, uses the same script to find out um, which parameters this, this um, Hamiltonian will need, which is um, yeah very handy, I think. Then um, the next step is... Um, so here in this template, there are already some um, 
variables which are um, global uh, within um, the um, the Hamiltonian, but the rest of the um, con rest of Alf doesn't see, which is the the lattice, the unit cell of the lattice, and the hopping matrix, which I think we will not use this time because we will make a very trivial um, hopping even without um, uh, without checkerboard, and the list and inf list um, for the for the lattice. Um, and what we'll add here is um, a second unit cell because um, the easing spins live on a, um, like have one um, um, uh, uh, we have one un um, easing spin per unit cell but two um, uh, fermions per unit cell. And then we also add some other um, variables for bookkeeping. So I'll just copy this here from, from my, my cheat sheet. And yeah, we have here some, some storage for the, for the easing action. And um, um, yeah, some basically store it for the easing action. These things, uh, we will see it later more in detail. Um, then the next um, step after this is to um, to populate here the body of the um, ham set, which is um, the, the subroutine which gets called in the very beginning to that um, defines all the um, the subroutine uh, um, defines the hopping and and the um, the interaction basically, and here is already um, some suggested content basically. You can look at this. So um, first, it um, reads the parameters. Uh, um, so this subroutine read parameters um, is uh, dynamically um, uh, created uh, on compile time based on this um, list of parameters. Um, I added earlier, and it's um, like this is the dynamically created uh, file Hamiltonian pneumatic Dirac demo, demo read write parameters. It's um, already included up here. Then um, the next thing is um, setting L trot, which is the number of time slices, a, a number of imaginary time slices, and um, tether trot if we have um, a projector code. And then um, call some the uh, other some other uh, uh, subroutines. These are mainly so. In principle, we could do the same thing in within all, all within ham lat uh, within ha ham set, but uh, it's easier um, to like more tidy to to just have a different subroutine to to create the lattice, um, create the hopping, and uh, create the interaction. And I will. Um, to some um, changes here, so I will keep the read parameters, but instead um, of um, doing like I will not uh, implement a projector uh, um, 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 functionality for this. I will also like have some way to to um, define like have to define a tryable function so on, and this will kind of. Um, make it much too long and uh, so I will just uh, remove this part here uh, not define any any uh, any driver function for for projector and I will just um, hard code um, this uh, projector e equal um, like this logical variable which is um, inherited from the from the hem base uh, to false and the theta uh, trot which is the um, like the imaginary theta time slices to zero. And I will also not um, implement uh, symmetric um, uh, uh, decomposition, symmetric product decomposition. So I will just hard code uh, these things here together with the with setting the L trot. I will hard code um, the, um, these variables uh, inherited from, from the base Hamiltonian together with the 
I will also set the number of flavors equal to one. And um, so that was uh, what we will, almost what we will need it. So we also have to um, ha um, um, we'll also uh, define um, a subroutine uh, setup easing action, which um, defines these, uh, uh, sets the value of these uh, variables I added earlier, which um, are needed for the for the easing action. Uh, yes, and so these are the the things I I added here. So this calls to the subroutines, and now we will of course have also add the subroutines we just um, called. Ah, before that, actually, again, exactly there's this um, this block where um, we write all these parameters and so on to the info file, which we could, in principle, I mean, we could leave it away, and then the info file would not be very in, in uh, would not not have so much info. <laughs> but of course, we want to have all these parameters um, written in the info file to easily access this, and so I also uh, copied this. So here it's already like suggested one what one uh, could write here. And I will just copy here my already pre-prepared list of parameters in here and replace this commented out part. So like this, yeah, looks good. And this I can get rid of. And um, yeah, so now um, the next step is um, the lattice. So um, we will create a parallel lattice with two um, with the base uh, vectors um, one one and one minus one. And um, two different unit cells, the fermions have um, si um, two orbitals per unit cell with 0, 0 and uh, a 0, 1 here, side, side A and side B here. And the easing spin will just have a trivial unit cell. And um, so for this, I will also just copy here from my cheat sheet this thing, and then we can take a brief look at this together. And so, um, yeah, we have here first um, as uh, local variables, um, A1 and A2 and L1 and L2, which define uh, the, um, yeah, the letters. And um, then, I mean, it's basically, it's pretty self-explanatory. We will uh, populate um, the unit cell for the fermions, um, the unit cell for the for the easing spins, and um, create the letters. And yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> and um, that's for the, for the Bravi letters, or like for defining um, let and let unit. And then we also have to um, populate the list and the inf list um, as I've um, elaborated on the first day. This can also, like, there are also this in this predefined uh, structures, these things are, um, are kind of taken care of, but I, I'm doing the pedestrian route basically and not using the predefined structures in this example. And yeah, so now that we've created uh, our letters, the next step is to add the hopping. And um, so here we have the um, the Pyflux uh, square letters. So we'll have here um, for each um, unit cell, we have uh, four vertices um, to from so between the different um, 
between the, the different orbitals, like from, from orbital A to orbital B. And so I will just first copy here. Oops, so no. mm, that's... So at here the subroutine for the hopping. And here, uh, as I said, I'm I'm doing the very um, pedestrian and most trivial uh, version where I just create one hopping operator without um, um, without checkerboard of size um, n dim times n dim. Um, so I this OPT is basically just a uh, one times one size. So this is the the array of of hopping matrices. So I will just create one single hop, hopping matrix ma matrix, and of size n dim. And um, and here I do for for each um, site uh, for for each unit cell. So here is the, the um, loop over the unit cells. I will, um, and the, here I will get for this um, unit cell, um, site A, the, um, the global um, integer um, with, with inf list. And then for, for each of, of these uh, unit cell, I have, have the, the four vertices. So this is the the loop um, over these four vertices, and then for each uh, vertex here, I will have here. So for the first vertex, I just go from R to R. So I I just have here basically an identity uh, nearest neighbor sides zero zero, but I will go to um, um, sub lattice B or side B. And set here the um, the hopping interval to um, minus t times one minus i. So this is a complex number, which is one minus i divided by square root of two, which is the same as e to the minus i pi over four. This num so this number is the same as this number, and uh, so on for the other. Four vertices here is um, zero one is um, with here with a minus e, e minus so e, e minus is um, um, a two actually so it's ah yeah it's a bit but yeah I mean it's it's not that complicated so. Uh, and then um, we also have to set the the p since we just make um, an operator that is just the whole size of the lattice. Um, the p will just the identity, so I will, will just say um, that. So p is the the projector, so we will just say p i equals uh, i. So um, p is just the uh, the identity matrix, the projector p, and then o. Um, we can just take, yeah, ignore the projector and, and O is just a, a global thing. Um, uh, o is the, the whole hopping in one in one O. Uh, and yeah, here I will also add the, the chemical potential together with defining my projector to an identity. And yeah, finally, I'll have to at here um, alpha equals to zero. Um, yeah, if I yeah, I, I guess if you look at it later in, in, in detail, you can compare the how the operator type is exactly defined and see that alpha is basically an offset and g is a, is a prefactor, which we will set to, to delta tau. Oops. And yeah, that's then the hopping part. 
and um, after the hopping um, we will oh, also something to f and you should not forget after you've um, um, uh, uh, populated p o g and alpha you will you should call this op set <laughs> otherwise basically your code will just crash i think but uh, yeah this will yeah and so we have the hopping and after the hopping comes the the interactions so this is this yukawa type interaction and here um We'll use the subroutine HAMV. So, um, so um, yeah, the this is the interaction. So it's basically almost the same as um, the hopping, except that we have here um, the easing spin. And here, um, two times a, a minus here to get this anisotropy here to this two minuses here. And so um, each, um, so here we have a, um, an easing spin, which means we have a um, hopping, um, uh, we have um, an interaction of type one. And um, so we have one, one vertex uh, for each unit cell. Um, and yeah, this this um, n sigma or it's the n s u n of the of the model, which is this um, like it. This becomes um, just an exponential of the um, of the action and not an, a power of the action. And so this is already hard coded in alf basically so this is this we can ignore um and so uh we create for for each uh unit cell one um one one uh operator and then um uh have uh, this uh, again this loop over the unit cell but now we have um, for each unit cell one one operator, not write everything in in one operator, and so we cr create here an operator where we previously had here uh, n dim as the size of the operator. We now have here um, size uh, uh, um, size five, and the size five is basically this uh, fermion, and these four fermions together are size five, and now. Um, we have to use the um, this projector um, in a more uh, non-trivial way, and so the first um, element of O um, we point to um, a so site sub sub lattice um, one here, which is uh, a or orbital one of our um, current unit cell and then um, the other four we will have here again a loop over our um, four um, terms here and then the first one is again the one one so also same um, unit cell but sublet is two and then we have here um, the next unit cell, so plus um, A2, um, R plus A2 in, in, in unit cell, um, in um, sub lattice 2 or orbital 2, and so on. Yeah, that's basically just translating this to this. And yeah, that's the, the interaction part. And then um, comes the, the the easing part, which um, perhaps I will okay I I will talk about here in full screen. That makes sense. Yeah. 
uh, yeah. So here, what we want to simulate is here this uh, easing model, uh, transverse field easing model. I mean, the easing model itself is classical. That's pretty easy. Um, so we have here um, the set um, as as set the classical easing spins, but we also have here the this uh, transverse uh, field which uh, couples to the x component. And uh, what we do is the first thing we um, like. Yeah, we want to calculate um, as always um, in in Monte Carlo the partition function, which is the trace of the uh, exponential of, um, of of our Hamiltonian or minus better our Hamiltonian. Um, and uh, the first thing is we do a product decomposition. So we, we separate here in the exponential the, um, the, the um, SZ part from the SX part. Um, in steps of delta tau and with all this um, commutations we have to do to um, replace this and to write this instead of as a instead of as a um, sum over all uh, instead of a exponential of the sums um, we want to write it here as a product of the of the two um, as, as a product of exponentials and there we have to do a lot of commutations and therefore, we get this trotter error. So pretty analogous to the to the way we saw it with the fermions. And then um, um, we can so then to to map these um, these things these uh, so we we want to have like something a classical computer understands. So we we need to uh, for for this we go um, one uh, to, like we, we go to a to a d dimension to d plus one dimension. So we add another dimension, and uh, then we add for each of these um, L tau slices we add we add a, a, an an identity, and um, then we can. Uh, ex express these uh, these ma um, matrix elements um, in the basis of the um, as set spins, and yeah, I mean this is a bit more details if we, if we want to go really into it. But at the end, what we what we see here is e to the s e thing looks like um, a d plus one dimensional uh, classical e thing part. So here is the normal easing interaction and where the, the, the J is rescaled with a delta tau. And here um, we have the, um, the interaction between two time slices where what is usually tau is now this gamma and this gamma is here minus one half the logarithm of the tang uh, tangent hyperbolicus of um, H. So the transverse field times delta tau. Um, yeah, and we, and then we can see. So, what we are interested in is, is basically, if we do some um, spin flip of some some single spins, we want to see how the action changes. So we want to have this ratio, um, new spin versus uh, like action of 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 new e to the minus action uh, of new spin divided by e to the minus action uh, of old spin. And then, depending of um, whether we are changing in in, in real space or um, um, like here in, in imaginary uh, time space or in, or, or in uh, real space, we either have here this uh, tangent hyperbolicus or um, here this exponential. And um, this information that now that we have it, um, we need to um, tell. Um, Alf, what what happens? What kind of action our type one fields have if we if we change change it? So the bosonic part, the fermionic part, we already um, told them with this. Uh, we already told 
uh, ALF with the HEM V. And um, the bosonic part, now we can tell by um, giving this the value of this ratio um, to ALF. And so, um, yeah, this is defined with this um, with the value of the S naught. And uh, the first thing is now we define we uh, save the value of um, this um, ta um, yeah these things in a um, in a variable that we don't have to recalculate it every time, and also some other book bookkeeping uh so search here yes you can remove uh set up the icing action so here we also have the the next nearest the, the list of next nearest neighbor for the for the easing spins in in a format reformatted in a in a easier way to is to to make the s not as easy as possible and then here we have the s not which i will copy right. Ta -ta. so um yeah, here it's also um, so this description is also in the hem base. So as I said, it's um, single flip uh, uh, um, spin flip s zero ratio. So this is uh, returns the exponential of s zero uh, of new divided by the exponential of minus s zero of of uh, the old value. And um, so what it what it's um, the arguments are the, the new hubbard sotonovich field, so the new easing configuration, and the time slice I'm, an, I'm at, and um, the operator um, which, gets, um, which gets flipped, basically. And now we, we can just go over the nearest neighbors of, of this uh, operator, so basically, it checks if the operator of, is of type one, and if it's of type one, then then we have an easing type operator, and then we go over this um, nearest neighbors and see um, so nearest neighbors in 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 here in, in space and um, define uh, yeah and then look depending on whether we have a a flip or no flip. Or in, um, we be, we have here um, we get here uh, this value encoded in in this uh, variable we have uh, here. So basically, here's the yeah uh, and here also uh, the same thing for um, for in in tau. And yeah, that's it. That's how we we tell uh, Alf about the the um, easing dynamics. And then, as a kind of bonus, is if we do global moves, we also have to tell if all the or pot potentially all the um, um, spins flip. How will the action change then? And therefore, this we will have to we would have to define this delta s not global, which calculates um, e two minus s zero, so the icing action divided by e two of the um, new uh, n sigma divided by e two minus icing action of the old configuration, and yeah, that's how it's done. I will not detail it at this point. So. Now, basically, uh, the Hamiltonian is finished. And um, now we uh, we have to define the, the observables. Um, so the first step is to um, yeah, 
to say which observables we have. So basically provide um, the observables. And there is in this um, template I copied is already this uh, stub for this alloc ops, um, which, which allocates the observables and here is commented out some suggestions or some, some default um, things of how to allocate the observables which I will again replace um, with here the things from my cheat sheet. Do, 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 do. Uh, mm. So basically, I will replace this here with this stuff. And here, so I will have um, five scalar observables, which is um, um, the just first of all, the, the particle number, so the, the filling, basically. Um, then um, the Easing set, set uh, um, expectation value, which should be zero because of um, um, of symmetry, uh, but it's a nice check whether we are really um, how, how good our simulation is. If this is not not zero, then our simulation or, or our sampling is at least to some extent flawed. Then here, um, so here, so this is a loop, and for each loop index. Um, for each loop iteration, we we um, call this observer make, make, which um, sets here one of our um, scalar observables in this array. And so, yeah, we have here um, one observable of length one um, for the particle number, one observable of length one for the um, easing set component, one observable of length three for the um, um, expectation value of the um, H zero and one for the expectation value of um, of H U carver and one for the sum, sum of both. And then here we have one for um, the easing X. Um, so the expectation value of the um, of the the easing in in uh, yeah S X. Which is also um, the um, derivative of our Hamiltonian by H, which is um, very handy for detecting or investigating the phase transition when tuning H. And um, for this, we also define here some um, some housekeeping um, parameters or some yeah some parameters to to uh, for calculating this observable. And then we also have an observable M, which is um, yeah this kind of um, magnetization, or it's basically the um, spin spin correlation at k equals uh, zero. And also, um, so we have here length three. We also calculate uh, save its second and fourth mo moment, which we will use, uh, which we can then use to calculate, for example, a Binder cum cumulant. So these are the, the scalar type observables. And then we have here um, correlation functions here for the um, um, for the uh, x component of the easing spins, for the z components for the easing spins, uh, for the green function, and for the um, density density correlations. And then also like for the time displaced icing um, spins is a bit, bit, bit of a special case because. Um, for this, we don't we don't really need the the time displaced screen functions. So this we can even measure if we say we don't want to have time displaced screen function because this is all in the in the easing degree of freedom. So I um, define it as part of my equal time observables, the time displaced easing uh, correlations. And then we have also two time displaced um, observables in the. Um, in the Fermi degrees of freedom, with, which is the Green's function and the uh, density density correlations. 
And now after that I um, calculate, uh, allocated the space for my observables, I can um, um, calculate them. So first here's um, a function that basically given the green function and giving, um, given um, your hem, um, your OPT, um, it calc it will calculate um, the uh, it will return the kinetic energy, which I will just copy paste here. It's probably also in the predefined structures, but as I said, I'm not using the predefined structures in this example. And then um, I'm gonna gonna here to the part observe, which gets gets called on every time slice to calculate um, the equal time observables. Here we already have, as be previously, we have here already a stub, um, which um, a lot of things are already is done. So here is some, some calculations for the phase is, is done here. And here um, the GRC is, is calculated because, so what the internal green function is this GR, which is CC dagger. And um, GRC is um, C dagger C, and this is um, calculated here at this point. And then uh, we here it says uh, add local variables as needed. And for this, I will add here some local variables um, for calculating um, all the observables I want to have. And now here it says uh, compute scalar observables. Um, I will copy here this stuff here. So the first step is here increase for all my uh, this for all my scalar observables um, the counter of how how much how often I I measured. And add here um, uh, this, um, and, and measure basically the sign of these observables. And then um, I will have here I, I have here some some temporary storage for um, the um, Ising Z component and Ising X component, and also for um, this M I, I defined earlier. Uh, and uh, also here, um, NT1 is, is um, some helper observable for getting the next neighbor of um, the, um, because for the icing, for the, for the X component, we need the, the, the next neighbor in, in time um, of the spin, uh, of the easing spin. And there it's either um, N tau plus one, or if I'm completely at, at the end, so if n tau is equal to, to L trot, I have the periodic boundary conditions in um, imaginary time, and then this is one. And then here I calculate the particle number. So the particle number is just the sum over C dega C, uh, um, multiplied by um, N S U N. And here I will, I will save it here in the scalar observable. And then similar things um, I will do here for this um, potential uh, energy and uh, the kinetic energy I will calculate with this uh, function I pasted here earlier. And um, yeah, here also I will, I'm calculating the um, icing set component, which is just a sum over n sigma on our time slice here. Um, on our current time slice. And um, easing X is basically um, measured by seeing if uh, two time slices are um, identical. And then um, easing X is this, um, yeah, either, either this is, is the tangens hyperbolicus. And if they're not the same, it's one over the tangens hyperbolicus. I think uh, I saved it here. So, but yeah, exactly. 
of d tau times h. And um, yeah, these things I will um, divide um, by number of, of unit cells and then um, save here also in, in the observables. And now um, I have to go down here again to copy from the equal time correlation functions. So here I, I, I measure the, the um, equal time correlation function. And um, I will, for the first two equal time correlation function, I um, um, increase the counter by one and measure the, the, the sign. So these two are the actual um, equal time correlation function, which I just, um, so for these two cases, I use the, the predefined lattices for the green function and for the density density correlation functions. And um, for the, the, the xx and, and, and zz correlation function, as I said, I have access for uh, uh, contrary to the to the um, uh, uh, green uh, I was saying um, uh, the, the terminal degrees of freedom, I only have access to one time slice uh, of the Green's function. But uh, for N sigma, I have um, access to the whole space-time um, uh, um, configuration. And therefore, I, um, I only um, measure it once per slice. And then I can measure everything once per, once per time slice. And yeah, I think. I'm running a bit out of time, so I will not go into the details here. Um, yeah, I guess one one thing that's that's interesting here is so basically for measure, measuring the the correlation function, I uh, have here the first the loop um, i over all the the unit cells, and then the uh, the loop uh, j over all the unit cells. And then I can ha use this um, lattice imj to um, to calculate the index, which corresponds to um, r ri minus, minus rj, um, and can save this here in this, in this um, correlation functions. And then... Yeah, um, here I, I I measure the um, xx and, and zz correlation functions. Um, and um, time, like basically time displaced, but in my in our equal time correlation functions one, once per, per, per sweep. And these were the, the observe for the, for the equal time measurements. And then for the time displaced measurements, I'm again copying it for the using the predefined um, observables. And yeah, now um, my Hamiltonian should be finished. So yeah, yes notes of how to yeah, increase the number of, of measurements and set, measure the sign and then save um, save it here with the ops rec and here uh, similar to the actually this should not be ops skull but ops um, eq or ops tau um, and then um, exactly the very last step is to um, add here. So go here in the program in the in, in proc 
to Hamiltonians.list and now just add here pneumatic, pneumatic Dirac demo, demo. So either we add it here di directly or we can also um, add it here uh, to Hamiltonians.list dot list Hamiltonians dot list dot d here to to some new file so these two things have the same um, effect so if you see what we what we actually changed here um, so this is either we added here to this file this this one line or just add an um, additional uh, file to the Hamiltonians.list.d, which also has the same line. And if we make this modification, then if we look at um, git status at what, what we changed, we just added this two, these two files, this one file, which has this, just one line, which has pneumatic direct demo, and we added the submodule um, Hamiltonian pneumatic direct demo uh, as mod.f90. And now we should be able to compile it. Let's see. So, uh, yeah, let's clean it perhaps and compile it. Somehow takes very long. <laughs> yeah. 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 Huh? It's just here uh, in in the proc folder. Or oh, you mean um, this file or this 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 cheat sheet? From which I copy. Uh, it's on my hard drive right now. But, but uh, no, but I will publish it together with 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 my slides. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um. I I, I thought it it would anyway be too dis too too, too too quick. So I I thought I just don't don't tempt you and then you can perhaps follow. <laughs> um. So of course um. We did get some uh. Uh, so here on line 166 at the very beginning ah yeah that's also it's just where where does this come from you typed in a new line. Yeah. And then um, let's see if it works now. Uh, here I somehow added here a semicolon at line 662. Yeah. And now argument mismatch for the overriding procedure. S0. Ah, probably. Ah, yeah. The HS new has to be because I'm, I was lazy and I copied from some old stuff. Um, so this is actually HS new is now complex because with the introduction of the type four, um, operators, the highest, the um, 
Hubbard search one in which field has become complex. Um, I'm, I think I'm not even using HS new here because I already knew that HS new is HS old minus times minus one because this is only gets called if uh, if the spin gets flipped. Yes. So. <laughs> I successfully compiled my Hamiltonian. <laughs> now I just have to run it. Um, so I will um, copy from the scripts and parameters file. I think I'm only like five minutes or so over time or five to 10 minutes because I started a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I mean, I, I started I started like 10 minutes late because everyone was in the coffee break and didn't come. <laughs> so I'm I'm of course taking the time I'm owed. No. <laughs> so uh, to test it, I'm I'm have of course my, my Hamiltonian name to pneumatic Dirac uh how do I call it? Demo. And then we just have to add here um, the um, name list var nematic Dirac. And we just make an empty name list because we just want to run with the default parameters, which should work. And it runs. I'm not sure how long, but shouldn't run too long. Um, yeah, it's finished. And we can take a look at the info file. Yeah, it's very stable. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, the acceptance is a bit low, but apart from that, it's it's pretty good. I'm probably deep in the ordered phase, and I have a what's the h zero uh, three? Ah, oh, it's I don't know, but yeah, okay. So, um, now I will start like after like I'm I'm finished. I think now I'm probably there are some questions. Um, I'm I'm ready to answer your questions and. After I'm 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 finished, I can start some simulations and tomorrow I will analyze them with PyR. <laughs> Thank you very much for this live demo, Jonas. Now if we have some questions. Uh why do you turn off the doctor's decomposition symmetry? Um because um um, for the symmetric total decomposition, I also oh, have to um, um, have like my job is to make um, ham t uh, um, opt and opv um, symmetric. That's my job, and I didn't do this in the semitolian, so I just hard coded it to false. I see. So that's that's part of the Hamiltonian to make um, the the contents of um, OPT and OPV um, symmetric. Uh, and um, then if this is true, um, the rest of ALF assumes that this is symmetric and then um, I can I can have in principle much nicer results, but and much smaller um, trotter errors, but um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do it. <laughs> okay. Luis? Uh, could you quickly demonstrate the auto in sh of course because now yeah it's good opportunity maybe yes so um this is a good point so basically i have here um the conf out um and if i now run um i would run alpha again it would repeat exactly the same simulation and add it to my bins here which would be wrong because then i have two times the same simulations and i will 
have wrong, wrong results. Um, like, especially I will underestimate my errors. And so before, before restarting the thing, I will have to call this out to in and it will rename the conf out to conf in. And um, now, so here it previously said no initial configuration. And now if I now run, um, it will not say um, no initial configuration, but restart just from the, um, from here my conf in. Any more questions? Hmm. Okay, so now we can conclude this session. And let's take again, Jonas. <laughs>